So now that we've beaten all the levels of the game, we can finally go to the final boss. Wait a minute. What? I mean, great, I already knew this was coming, but seriously? Why are we expected to fight all of the bosses again? And the most annoying thing is, this is the only advanced game that has this is the only advanced game that has a boss rush in it, and it's also the advanced game that has the worst bosses. So, oh yeah, this is how you can defeat that boss really quickly. I'm really glad I was able to show that off. Thankfully the boss rush isn't too big of a deal, because they're defeated a lot faster in the boss rush. I guess Eggman didn't have enough materials to make good versions of them all over again, and so he was really rushed. That's the only explanation I can think of for why he fought us with exact same machines again. A boss rush is just a cheap way of padding out the game, so I don't really see why it's considered acceptable in any game. Here's the annoying thing. If you die to this boss, if you lose all your lives, you have to play the boss rush all over again. I have zero lives by this point. Thankfully, I feel like this boss is more than worth the boss rush. Even though it really would have been better if they had no boss rush at all. You know why this is the best boss in the game? Because it's not a running boss. Instead, this is a boss that has a good sense to allow you to just be standing still. What you have to do is stand on these rising platforms and spin dash to the boss. And it's a good idea to rev up it as much as possible to make sure that you hit it instead of not moving fast enough. And you can jump into the arms that that fly towards you to damage them. When the platforms are rising and they have steam and stuff, you're going to be bounced upwards by them and you'll be vulnerable. So it's better to just jump on them after they do their bouncing thing. But it's annoying when the rising platforms rise you up to the boss firing a laser. Because then it kind of feels like you got cheated out of a hit. But yeah, I find that to be the most fun boss in the game. Why can't all of the bosses in the game be like that? And that's the only boss in the game that is really affected by turning it to easy mode. In easy mode, the platform that it chooses to rise up first is different. For the most part, the easy mode just changes the amount of hits that it takes to defeat the bosses. It goes from 8 to 4. So I recommend playing easy mode for this game because the bosses are so annoying because of the whole always running thing that it really is better to just get them over with as fast as possible. The gameplay on the other hand is excellent. This feels such a, a thrilling and fast and enjoyable experience to me. I mean, you sure you are just holding right most of the time? But it feels so satisfying when you outrun the camera and you have this after image behind your character and there is some platforming too. Although there are problems with level design like the bottomless pits and sometimes the level sometimes the levels reuse too much of the gimmicks from the previous levels. And so it's like when I wrote a review of this game, it looked like I was mostly criticizing the levels, but that's because most of the good things I had to say about the levels were it's fast and fun. So it would have gotten repetitive. Like, there's, I often have a lot of stuff to criticize about the levels. But for the most part, I don't find any of the levels in this game to be mostly frustrating. The final level of the game is mainly frustrating that it has bottomless pits and checkpoint starvation. So I think this is definitely an underrated gem. This is a lot better than people give it credit. Even though it's not like a classic Sonic game, it's still really enjoyable. Although the boss fights are terrible, the levels are nearly, the levels are much more fun than the boss fights are. So every time I play this game, I have, I have a cartridge that, I have a cartridge that doesn't save my progress. So I play through the entire game every single time that I play the game. And it's worth fighting all the bosses again just to get to the levels. So that's Vanilla, Cream's mom. 
I never liked her design. I never liked how her head was the same size as Cream's, even though she's an adult and Cream is six years old. It it always something about Vanel's design just looks really off because of that, and I don't really like looking at it because of it. In terms of personality, Vanella is strict but loving at the same time. She's very she's very insistent on Cream having good manners. So I imagine it would be kind of intimidating living in her household, but at the same time, she must be somewhat lenient because she lets Cream go on dangerous adventures and stuff. But yeah, this is what happens when you get all the chaos over. But yeah, this is the 2D supersonic fight. I love the music for it. It's so cool and I love the instrumentation and the melody and everything. Although the part of it that plays when Sonic is transforming is kind of repetitive because there's not enough to it. There's also projectiles that knock you back. And if you get frozen, then you lose a whole bunch of rings and you're kind of helpless smashing buttons. What you've got to do is you've got to dash into the missiles to knock them back towards the head of the boss. It's so picky. Like, why do you have to only hit the head? Why can't the other parts of it be vulnerable too? And it's like, sometimes the missiles are headed in directions where it's not very easy to dash into them and send them to the right to the boss. It's so easy to run out of rings here because it's, a, it's so finicky. Like, the missiles, it's not like the missiles are generally heading to the left and you bounce and you dash into them and send them to the right. So you have to hope, you have to hope that the missile, you have to hope that the missiles happen to be on the top half of the screen. And it just feels, it looks deceptively hard because it's like, the missiles don't look like they're in the correct position to be sent to the right by you dashing to the right. I like the music of this place though. This is this is pretty cool music. And I like the after image that follows Supersonic. That's pretty cool. And then you've gotta dash downwards to send the missiles down at him. But yeah, like I kind of like this fight. Like I like how you're going through space and dodging all sorts of projectiles. And there's lots of rings to collect. But it's just so... I just don't like it regardless. Like, 2D supersonic sections in general suck to me. When you dash, you dash in one direction. And it can feel kind of stiff and hard to control. Like, it's not like you have smooth movement where you can move in all eight directions. And, it is, and even if you could only, you can only dash in one direction, so it doesn't feel like it's as easy to, like, I don't know. I feel like this, I feel like this drags on far too long. And this, this ending in general is really confusing. Like, okay, so first off, why did Eggman kidnap Benel in the first place? He had nothing in the game from it. And second, why was she in that animal capsule? Was he trying to turn her into a robot? Because roboticizing people is not something that happens in the game. Because naturally, it's too bleak and grim dark and stuff. He normally just turns animals into robots. And by that, I mean he just puts them inside robots to power them. And the most confusing thing is he, he falls down with... He, he falls from space, and just by grabbing Vanilla's hand, he saves her? How? I mean, Sonic's all powerful and magical, so I can believe that he might survive a fall from space just fine. Like, he might manipulate the air and slow down his fall. But Vanilla? Like, Vanilla doesn't really have any special abilities to make it so that she'd be able to survive a fall just fine. So that ending was kind of unbelievable to me. Stay tuned for the extra part.